today we're just going to make a little simple project, uh, a ring stand. Watch this. Please subscribe and click the bell button and that will notify you of new updates and uploads. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. <music>
So the next stage is just to put it into a chuck. Again, make sure your jaws are fairly clean. Uh, these jaws have a little lip here which pulls the wood into a chuck. So just put your thumb on the end. Just go to turn it round so we've got the key point there. And just tighten it, hand tight. Uh, and go to the other one and hand tight again. Uh, and that is now secure in the chuck. It should run pretty true. Uh, with the lathe switched off, we can just put the two rest there and just spin it round and we can see virtually he's running true. We're going to part it off. Now I want to leave a space between my tool and the chuck jaws. Now I want for this we go use a thin party tool but this is my thicker one uh, and I'm going to put another pencil on there which is a full width of my parting tool and that will give me clearance because we'll go down in two goes so that's marked it up we can just put uh, a cut in here just to define where the base is going to be uh, and that makes it easier so again two rest and everything locked down spin it round to make sure it clears everything hand over to the rest just slide the parting tool up and then just lift the handle slightly and just push it don't want to go too deep this is more of a reference mark than anything else uh, so we know what the full length of the ring stand will be. So now we want to take this down at this thin end, at this thick end here. Uh, easiest way is just to turn your two as to a slight angle. Uh, just got to drop it down slightly. Again, just spin the chuck to make sure it clears. Uh, and just take the corner off bit by bit. Using the spindle roughing gouge. I want to create a cone shape. Now we can see with a gap appearing uh, between the two rest and will work. So we'll just move the two rest in again. Just make sure everything's clear. And that's got the roughing downstairs done. So, so we've just got the hole to clear. So again, uh, just use a part to do now. If you're going really slowly, this will avoid tearing the grain too much. If you're going very quickly, guaranteed to tear the end grade and that's fairly clean. So we can actually start shaping it now. So I just want to get some of this down because we're going to make a tear job at this end. We want to keep the bulk of material at the top end for stability. So again just put the tool in and just lift handle so it always goes in on with a bevel and then lifts up into a cut. Now we're bringing this down now to the size I'm looking for. Um, so again just take small cuts. This is a 3-8 spindle gouge which I don't find a problem for a small item even. So we've got the little tip now and then just go to create a V cut so my tool is on its side. And then I'm just going to roll this over the steel job into there. Then just go down there. And that's got the first part completed. So we've got the scooters now. Long point down. Go to put it in there just to clean that part up there. Just come down that side of the steel job. That's nice and clean. Let me go cut the at this side. Just clear some space here. Again, just clean that down there. And a light cut down there. Let's have a look at that before we move on to the next stage. So again, that's nice and clean. Uh, just a bit in there, but that will come out when we do the next operation. We now need to clear some more material here. So again, just using three pin cuts with the spindle gouge, just to get that material away. So again, just want to come this way. Remember, the spindle turning, we always go down a hill. 
we always go from the largest diameter to the smallest. So we'll get some more of that cleared. Just want to clean up that small piece there. So again, we can just go in with this skew just a long point down, just to clean up in there. And then we can take some more material away here. Again, have the flute spacing the direction and have cutting in, which is towards my right. So my flutes are facing towards my right. Just come down, sweep into there. Then we can clean this up. Just nice light cuts. Don't need a lot of pressure. Now I'm just go put a little feature on here. So we'll just go down so far. Stop. And then pick the cut up again. And you can see as I'm going down, I'm just twisting the flutes. Slowly on the side. Pick that cut up. And then I'm rolling so they're facing upwards in the bottom. Remember, the cleaner you get this, the better it is for finishing. So just got to part down here a bit to give a bit of clearance. Again, just got to square up my tool rest. Want it close, but I need to make sure that it's clear of the jaws of the chuck. So just got to go down here. Again, using a standard party tool at the moment. Just got to make a little clearance cut. So again, I'm going down these steps, as you can see. And that will prevent the tool from binding. Then we just go to shape this part here. So again, with a spindle gouge, handle down, lift it up, and roll over. So I'm rolling the flutes to the left as I'm slightly moving on the tool rest. Just roll and lift the handle as well. So it's slide on the tool rest and lift the handle and rotate at the same time. So make sure your hand, keep an eye on your hand as well to make sure it's still clear of the chuck. That now is ready for sanding. So now we've got to give this a quick sand. Again, I'm starting with uh, 180. If I go any coarser, I'm going to mark the surface because it's a good surface at the moment. So, just extract the rod and give this a light sand. Just fold it in half just to get in that tiny area. Get that side, lead, just underneath. I'm looking for a uniform colour, even though this piece is slightly figured. If I have too much difference in colour, it indicates that it's, the surface is not fully sanded. So again, just clean that into there. And that's 180. When I've been sanding here, I've gone from 180 to 240, 320, and this is 400. But I've missed some of the steps out because you don't want to watch me sanding. So I'll turn the lathe off, the extractor, and just check to see if we've any marks in there, and that's clear. So next stage will be to put some sealant on. So today I'm going to be using sanding sealant. Uh, and this was silver wood, so when we put some wax on, uh, the wax will actually stay on the surface rather than soaking in. So I've just got some cloth, just go put a tiny drop on. A lead. Just spread it evenly over the surface. Get right down into there. Always wear safety glasses when you're doing this. Uh, People think it's only about wood fly. No, this can spray off if you get too much on. Uh, so again, put the cap on and lead. I'll just go over that and just rub it in. Get right into them nooks and crannies and V cuts. Buff up. So again, I'm just going to put it on while I'll switch 
believe on the cloth up above purely because I've got a camera lens up above me and if any should spray off onto the camera lens uh, it's going to create a slight problem for later so that dries very very quickly so that's now dry the next one I'm going to use is some wood wax 22 uh, it's a paste wax I would call it uh, it's excellent works very well very quickly so again just a small amount don't need a lot and with the lift stays to it just wipe it on so everywhere is now got a covering of that on uh, beauty of this is it can be buffed off straight away so we can switch the lathe on now and we'll just buff that up again I'd rather put two thin coats on than one thick coat and build it up that way don't forget to get right into them corners you can just fold your paper up and get right into the corners there just move the paper over to it so you get a clean part and then that will buff up you can see the shine coming on now straight away so we'll just switch the lathe off and I'll have a look at that and that is a beautiful sign some lovely markings there which has been brought out with the finishing the next stage is to part off so again just go to use a thinner blade parting tool now I part off left-handed reason why if I part off right-handed my arms coming over top of a chuck uh, to hold the piece if I go left-handed I can control it with my left hand and hold the piece in my right hand and then that's not going over top of a chuck but beginning I can use both hands in my right hand I just want to get some of that waste away now I'll go down the right hand side which is the base of the ring stand again I want to be going in either parallel or slightly undercutting it so it will sit flat on a desk or table now I'm down to around six millimeters or quarter an inch now I'm switching my hands now so I'm guiding it in I've got my right hand on the tool rest just to guide the tool in once I'm there I can just hold this very lightly in my fingers just parting really steadily just let the tool just go really slowly and it just pops off in your hand next thing turn the lathe off before you start admiring your piece of work uh, we've just got a little piece in the centre which we can just take off with a little carving tool uh, and, and that is a finished piece for a rinse stance so your rinse can be taken off and put on that either at uh, night time so I hope you enjoyed this simple project please uh, subscribe uh, to my channel thank you very much for watching